Hey guys, welcome to this new review brought to you by Nightlight Films. Um, I'm really glad to be back. As many of you know, I haven't done a lot of uh, reviews and tutorials in the past year because I've become resort manager and I've gone uh, professional uh, photographer full-time uh, for the Aurora Borealis Observatory on Senja Island, Norway. So I'm definitely back um, on the scene now. Uh, during the summer, I'll be shooting in the chilly uh, Atacama Desert. I'll be also shooting the um, total solar eclipse. That's why I wanted to make this video uh, to talk to you about the extender, the Kanko extender times two. Um, and after that, I'll be going to Hawaii. So lots of new things in perspective. I'll be doing more uh, reviews for sure, especially I have the Sigma 35, I have the Sigma 20, uh, 24 uh, to review. I know many of you have asked me to do that for astrophotography precisely. Uh, but so today I wanted to review the Kenko Extender Times 2 HD Pro. Um, I haven't found a lot of reviews on the net, uh, much less on YouTube. So, um, and this one is brand new. So I really wanted to do an in-depth review for day photography, daytime photography, but also nighttime photography, a bit of not like nightscapes, but moonshots. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do this is because I'm going to Chile um, in two weeks to shoot the eclipse and I'm pretty limited um, as to how many lenses I can bring with me. And I have the Sigma 150 500 mil um, APO, so I, couldn't possibly take this lens, this huge lens, piece of glass, awesome, really sharp, but really heavy as well. Um, so I have the Tamron 70 to 300 mil. And so um, I should show you my bag. I have tons of lenses. It weighs more than eight kilos, which is the limit uh, that you can bring on board um, in your carry-on luggage. <laughs> so. The point is, how could I optimize the weight of my bag by just bringing a lighter lens um, and bring fewer lenses and have the possibility, possibility to zoom in and extend uh, two times, especially because I'm shooting on full frame. I'm actually shooting with the Kenko extender right now on a 35 mil, so it's equivalent to times two, so 70 mil on a full frame. Um, so we're going to go in depth about um, some shots that I've taken today, but also during the full moon, full uh, strawberry moon of June, right from my patio. Um, so I'll be analyzing the sharpness, um, the, the stops of light that you lose, uh, the, the softness that can arise, but also the versatility of this extender. And overall, um, I can make a conclusion at the end, but overall, I'm super, super satisfied with this extender. Um, so we're gonna see why in a minute. And I'm super, super pumped to shoot with it uh, during the eclipse. So we'll see the, the final results for the eclipse, but the test shots that I've taken now are very, very promising. The Kenko Tilo Plus HD Pro 2 x Teleconverter replaces the long-seller Tilo Plus Pro 300 series that was quite soft and unsharp according to some reviews. This new model apparently has redesigned optics with more glass elements to fit high-resolution cameras and lenses. I chose the version compatible with Canon EF mount and here are some useful specs for you. It only weighs a staggering 180 grams and is quite compact, but out of the box it feels quite solid and well-designed. It weighs way less than other teleconverters like the Canon x2 or Sigma x2. It's compatible with both full frame and crop sensors. It's designed to be mounted between your camera body and your lens to give the latter a magnification of two times its original focal length, inferring an exposure loss of 2 EV, however. If you're not familiar with extenders, if you have, for example, a 100mm prime f2.8, it will become a 200 f5.6. If you want to use it for astrophotography or wildlife in darker situations, you're going to have to keep that minus two stops of light in mind and compensate accordingly or mount a lens with a very wide aperture to start with. Because of its very versatile flat shape, 
This converter is compatible with way more lenses than advertised on the Kenko website. So unlike the Canon extender with which very limited number of lenses will work, the Kenko Tool Plus HD Pro x 2 for Canon EF mount can be mounted with not only most Canon and Tokina lenses, but also third-party lenses like Tamron, Sigma, Samyang or Rokinon. The autofocus might only work with the Canon and Tokina lenses though. However, this detail alone was the reason why I bought the extender to start with, as opposed to the other ones that are too restricting in terms of lenses. So I've run some test shots from my patio right here. I've used two different camera bodies. I've used the Sony a7R II and I used the Canon 6D as well. I also used three different lenses. Um, I've used the Canon 16-35 f4. I've used the Tamron 70-300 f4 6.3. And the last one, I've used the Samyang Prime Lens 135mm f2. So first, even though most people won't use the extender with wide-angle lenses, I still made a comparison using the Sony a7R II and the Canon 16-35mm f4 using a constant middle aperture of f14, which is quite normal for daytime landscape. So this first shot is taken with the extender at originally 28mm, so it equals to 56mm on full frame. The overall image looks quite clean. When we zoom into the center, there's a very slight softness and color aberration, but the sharpness remains quite stunning, especially when you compare the original shot without the extender. When you slide over to the extreme corners, the extender causes some heavier blur and color aberration in comparison to the image without the extender. However, it only happens in extreme corners and as soon as you move slightly back to the center, this trend quickly disappears. The extender doesn't seem to affect contrasts or any elements of the picture otherwise. The extender might cause a slight temperature shift to the yellows but that can easily be corrected in post-process. I am actually quite stunned by the overall results given by the extender with a wide-angle lens. As expected, there's a slight degradation of the image quality in the corners, but if you're shooting with an ultra-high resolution sensor, you can easily use the frame for decent, sharp 4K work. I've now switched to the Tamron 70-300mm f4 5.6, which is certainly not the sharpest lens of its kind on the market, but it should do the trick. I took a shot at 300mm f14 without the extender and another one with the extender, which corresponds to 600mm without changing the aperture. Again, the aperture is pretty standard and in the middle of the range to get rid of any extra aberration. By the way, an advantage that I forgot to mention before was that you don't need to refocus between a shot with the extender and without, but still, always check your focus as you might have accidentally interfered with it. The results with the Tamron lens are quite similar as with the Canon lens. The image quality might overall be a tad softer with the Tamron lens as the sharpness performance of this lens is right above average. In the center, the extender performs well but it still introduces a bit of blur and fringing compared to the original shot without the extender. However, it's clear that you get better performance with the extender for the same amount of zoom. But as we move over to the corners, the softness and the aberration don't increase that much to my surprise like it did with the wide-angle lens. It's still sharper without the extender, but I'm still amazed at how the latter performs. Now, as expected, the extender might not give you quite the same performance as 600mm as if you had a real 600mm lens, but it still performs better than a 300mm propped to match the focal length. You surely trade detail for softness and color aberration, but for the price tag of about 350 US dollars, it still gives you a very decent quality while saving you thousands of dollars. I've now switched to nighttime photography using the same setup. To be more precise, I wanted to know how the extender performed under low light conditions but with rather bright deep sky objects like the moon or the sun in the purpose of using it during the solar eclipse. I even used it to shoot real-time 4K sequences of the full strawberry moon in Jupiter, which happened a few days ago. Now I haven't tested the extender from Milky Way or Star Shots, but I can already tell you that I am simply stunned by how it performs on moonshots. 
This is a shot I took at 300 mil using the extender, so 600 mil. I used an aperture of f16 to try and stop down from f11 to preserve maximum sharpness. On a side note, f11 is the new minimum aperture on this lens at 600 mil instead of 5.6 at 300. I took another shot without the extender but I had to compensate for the loss of light by adjusting other settings which in turn won't have that much of an impact on the general quality. The result is astounding. I cannot tell about the corners because they are too dark, but at the center, the sharpness is very good. There might be a tiny bit of softness and color aberration as shown in the daytime session, but it's actually less visible at night. The amount of detail and overall quality is obviously much better with the extender than the crop picture taken at 300mm without the extender. Even when filming in 4K, I can easily crop the image at 1080p and retain very good sharpness, color and detail. Again, this might not be as good as a 600mm lens, but the Kenko extender really is a good alternative to consider if you don't want to buy an expensive lens and want to shoot the moon or an eclipse. Now, just something I wanted to point out though. I've tried the extender with the Canon 6D and the very fast prime Samyang 135mm f2 to test the bright aperture performance. Using the extender, I can get to 270 f4 equivalent. However, I've noticed that the extender is not made for such wide apertures. Wide open, it produced a very soft and blurred image. I had to stop down one full stop of light, so to 5.6, to make this ordeal disappear. I will try and shoot deep sky Milky Way shots with it in Chile, so I will tell you more about it when I come back. But keep in mind that you might have to stop down your aperture one extra stop in addition of the two exposure values lost due to the magnification in order to maintain the extender's performances. Mm -hmm.